Seven chakras, seven planes of existence, and seven sins. On today's episode of the Magister Sanctum. Greetings everyone, I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on my first episode of the Magister Sanctum of a brand new channel that I am very excited to bring to all of you. Several years ago, back in 2011, I had what I would call a spiritual quickening. And in that quickening, I received a bunch of downloads from the universe and basically came up with this poster. The universe is our energetic family. It's where I combined the seven chakras, the seven sins, and the seven planes of existence all onto one poster, along with some other elements, elements of the zodiac, sacred masculine, sacred feminine, and all of that. But right now we're going to focus particularly on the chakras, which is sort of the meat and potatoes of the whole poster. So seven planes of existence. Let's start at the highest, which is what I labeled the plane of love. Most of us call it the crown chakra. And what is unique about this is that I found that we could take the planes and combine it with both what is the high vibration of the chakras and the low vibration of sin in our lives. So if we were to look at the plane of love, we find that it is divided up into the sin of pride or the infinite love of the universe. And essentially, that is pretty much the two vibrations of love. When we become too wrapped up in our pride, we can't see beyond ourselves. So we are unopened or we cut ourselves off from all that is. We cut ourselves off from expanding beyond ourselves. Pride, you know, the, the reason why it's a sin is because we view it as, as the love of the infinite. And I think that is the real great trickery of the sin of pride because pride is love and it and it encompasses everything that we love we interpret it as the infinite but it isn't the plane of love is either the low vibration of pride or it is the high vibration of the infinite the more we tap into the infinite the more we can expand our consciousness the more we can explore the cosmos the more that we can relate and empathize with other people and again when we become wrapped up in our pride, we are not in an expansive mode. Okay, let's move on to the next plane of existence or the next chakra. Most of the times, or most of us know this as the third eye chakra. And I've relabeled this as the plane of cosmic law. So the cosmic law is divided into two sections. It's either divided into the sin of wrath or it is divided into the high vibrational function of understanding. Now, I know a lot of people have been saying, you know, relabeling understanding as inner standing, as overstanding, all this kind of stuff. But for me, I think understanding is actually quite an accurate word because the only being or the only entity that we should ever stand under is God or the creator or the universe or all that is, source energy, whatever you want to call it, whatever your most high is or whatever your version of the most high is we always stand under the ultimate being. Understanding to me is a very accurate word. And again, it's all related to cosmic law. Cosmic law has to deal with the laws of cause and effect, the laws of karma. Um, it can deal with even other laws such as scientific law, music theory, physics, mathematics, biology, all of these highly abstract um, sort of subjects that we study to essentially expand our understanding of the awareness. And when we do not understand these types of things, that's when we start to fall into a state of wrath. Essentially, wrath is when we do not understand enough or we choose to not expand beyond what we want to understand, mainly because of our pride. Everything that has to relate to cosmic law 
usually falls into either the sin of wrath or the higher vibration of understanding. And we can always tell when we begin to fall into sin because we begin to experience those sins, that anger, the wrath. Again, if you're experiencing anger or wrath, turn to Cosmic Law, read some more books, listen to some more podcasts, expand your understanding and awareness. All right, so let's move on to the next, what has been traditionally called the throat chakra, but I have relabeled the plane of the archetype. Now, the plane of the archetype is divided into two sections, the sin of sloth or the high vibration of communication. And so, so what is archetype? Uh, we could look towards, you know, Jungian philosophy. We can look towards the tarot. We can look towards movies. We can look towards whoever our heroes and villains are. That is the plane of the archetype. And it's no coincidence that it coincides with the throat chakra because the throat chakra to me is also everything that encompasses the area around the throat chakra, which is the face. So your face and what we project is also what we communicate. There's a lot of nonverbal communication that happens in our face. It happens with our eyes. It happens with the rest of our body language. All of this defines who we are as people. And if we do not know who we are as people, we fall into the sin of sloth. Now, traditionally, the sin of sloth has been labeled as laziness, but I think, well, because a lot is lost in time and a lot is, is lost in language, I've sort of relabeled the sin of sloth as depression. And when we do not know how to communicate, we become depressed. When we do not know who we are, we become depressed. And when we become depressed, we fall into the sin of sloth. Some people become so depressed that they can't even get out of bed because they've given up hope. And again, I would say if you're in that position, well, not only should you probably seek out um, therapy or a mental health professional, but also look towards the plane of the archetype. Who are your heroes? Who are the people that inspire you? Follow their lead and learn from them and learn what they did. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So we have, we have the heart chakra. Well, what's traditionally been called the heart chakra. I call the realm or I call the plane of spirit. And in its low vibration, we begin to fall into the sin of envy. And in its high vibration, we experience courage. It's very interesting because the body can live without the brain, but the body cannot live without the heart. The heart is essentially pumping our blood through us. It's pumping the prana through us. And I believe that a huge part of that is the fact that the heart is drawing upon the energy of the Akash, of the spirit. The more we dive into our spiritual practices, the stronger our heart becomes, the stronger our lungs become, because the heart chakra is also tied in with the lungs as well. The deeper we breathe, the, the more zest we have for life. And all of this is related to the heart. Now, if we are not spiritual people, or if we don't have anything which inspires the spirit of the heart, we begin to fall into the sin of envy. And we fall into the sin of envy because we do not have the courage to live our life as we see fit. Again, why do anything if there's no point to anything? And that is where spiritual practices come in. If you're atheist or agnostic, then I would say find inspiration in perhaps what you do. Find, find inspiration in those activities which give you that zest for life. Okay, coming right up is the sphere of animals. It is the third plane of existence. Most of you know it as the power chakra or the stomach chakra. It is divided either into the sin of gluttony or the high vibration function of empathy. I'm not gonna tell people to be vegetarians or any of that kind of stuff. 
everyone has to make their own choice. But how many of us are mindful of the animals that we consume? How many of us offer thanks to the animal that had to sacrifice themselves to be put into our hot dogs and hamburgers? Or how many people even think about what they're putting into their body when we are waiting at a fast food drive through just waiting for our chicken nuggets or whatever to come to us? Chances are a lot of times we don't give much mind to the sacrifice of the animal. And unfortunately, when we don't pay attention or when we don't when we're not mindful of that, that's when we start to fall into the sin of gluttony. Gluttony is also a little bit more complex because it also, I believe, has to deal with boundaries, okay? So when we become gluttonous, we begin to lose boundaries because if we don't pay any mind to the animals that we're consuming, we also don't pay any mind to the people in our lives. And so we begin to take them for granted. We begin to lose our empathy for what another person is going through because we have no boundaries. We are not given any mind to that person and we become gluttonous, both in the physical sense and in the spiritual sense. And a lot of that has to do with our stomach chakra. Having that sense of empathy, being mindful towards other sentient beings helps to keep us from falling into the sin of gluttony. All right, moving right along. So we've got the sphere of the plants, also known as the sacral chakra. In its low vibration, we fall into the sin of lust. And in the high vibration, we experience ecstasy or joy. Now it's interesting because the word ecstasy has also been accepted by many religious practices too. So our whole sense of being is to find that inner joy, to find that ecstasy. And a lot of times we, we try and find that joy through lust. I mean, how many people you know, use, use sex as a means to essentially feel better about themselves or to feel, to feel anything at all, to feel any type of joy. But the reality is we must find that joy within us. And the reason why it's associated with the sacral chakra and the sphere of the plants is because how we consume plants and the variety of plants in our diet is typically reflective of our health. If we were to look at a lot of our medicines, they at one point came from plants. It doesn't matter whether we, you know, go on an ayahuasca trip in the Amazonian rainforest or whether we're grinding up herbs and spices in our cooking. Plants have a huge role in our health. Um, the the hallucinogens have a huge role in our mental health. The, again, like I said, the, the spices, the cooking spices and herbs that we choose to use, the teas we drink, a lot of this stuff has very beneficial health consequences. Okay, so the last chakra is the root chakra or what I would call the plane of the earth. In high vibration, we experience connection and in low vibration, we experience the sin of greed. And this is when we become disconnected. Now, it's really interesting because we live in one of the most disconnected, connected times in human civilization. You know, we can, we could be friends with thousands or tens of thousands of people, but how many people are truly in our lives? And it's no coincidence that we are seeing the sin of greed running rampant everywhere. Everywhere you go, whether it's corporations or whether it's the individual, everyone is greedy. You know, we have housing completely out of whack. We have, we have employees that, that don't get paid enough. We have employers that can't afford to pay their employees what they're worth. You see, it's very easy to point the finger at another person, but the bottom line is a lot of times people don't understand just how expensive things can get. Even going beyond an economic um, system, let's look at the spiritual system. Let's look at how we're treating our planet. Um, now, I'm not, 
I'm not going to talk about certain things of whether or not humans are responsible for it, but I think we can definitely agree that we are not treating the planet as we should. It's becoming more toxic every day. It is, you know, we're, we're, we're completely ravaging every resource that we have in this planet. And for what? A lot of it is for profit. And then you gotta ask yourself, well, why do I need to profit so much? For a lot of us, um, because we don't have that connection, especially because we don't have the, the connection to a lot of people in our lives, we, we tend to fill that void with material wealth. And unfortunately, the earth and all of us, the animals and the humans, all of us, we're, we're all paying a high price for that. And no one quite knows when we're gonna pull ourselves out of this. I think the only way that we can do this is to essentially redesign our entire economic systems, our entire political systems. We need to redesign what human incentive is. We need to redesign how employment works. We need to redesign what we want from our lives to reestablish those connections amongst each other. And again, this is all related to the root chakra. It's all related to either the sin of greed or the high vibration of connection. That was a brief synopsis of the universe is our energetic family. Thank you all. I love you all. And we are going to finish with the chant of Obleron. I'll see you in the next video. Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obliron, Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obliron. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.